Hello everyone! Today is the 24th day of the Juice Feast and today's the day when all, most of the other students that haven't arrived yet arrived. So Nathan and I have been very busy um, helping to get people settled in. <clears throat> He's actually renovating a house that unfortunately wasn't quite ready for the students. So he had to put them up in a hotel for a couple days. So that was disappointing. Um, sometimes our timing's slightly off in life. We have to flow with it, I guess. I'm drinking my evening juice. And I realized that usually I drink my greens well, my main greens during the day or early part of the day. And then I drink my fruit, which you're allowed um, about a quart a day. Although I don't think I drink that much. I drink maybe a glass. Uh, you're allowed um, to drink that in the first 30 days. And I think the reason, I was thinking today, the reason why I do that is by the end of the day I'm tired and uh, the juices have more sugar usually, the, the fruits have more sugar, so I'm trying to, um, you know, give myself a little boost. Probably it would be smart just to go to sleep at that point. I could try that maybe next month when I'm not so busy. Um, but the greens can be sweet also if you use a lot of carrot and a lot of beets. Now today I made a, a drink at the, at the health food store. What he had was half a glass of uh, carrot, kale, and beet. So I told him to add uh, some lettuce and some lemon. And that was a really good mixture. I think what's important is that you use a lot of mild uh, vegetables when you're juicing, especially at first, like celery or romaine lettuce. Um, even cucumber. They're very juicy and yet they're mild tasting. Some people start with half carrot and then go from there with their greens. At this point I can usually tolerate practically any combination of greens. Uh, there's nothing that I say, eh, I can't drink this because I usually realize it is um, good for me. Now sometimes I'll warm up a little water and add a little bouillon. You have to be careful what bouillon you use. I like the Rapunzel. I wish they made a good bouillon with um, like coconut oil or hemp seed oil or something, but I haven't found it yet. Um, so uh, sometimes I'll put fresh garlic and ginger in my uh, drinks or like basil or something tasty to spice it up a little bit. Hot pepper is always good. Mm. Some people can't tolerate uh, things too spicy. But I guess on the juice feast for me, that's good. Now whenever I have fruit juice, I usually uh, put powdered uh, greens in it, just to make it more alkaline. This one's good. It's mm, peaches and, let's see, pineapple. And then I mixed in some of this Boku superfood. This Boku superfood's not really on the juice feast, but it's got a lot of ingredients in it that are. And I like the taste. 
the first one is organic barley grass juice, then organic cactus, organic spirulina, organic nettle leaf, organic kelp, chlorella, Klamath Lake, blue-green algae, broccoli juice, spinach juice, all these are organic. Kale juice, cabbage juice, parsley, lacuma, maca root, reishi, and there's a blend of um, super mushrooms. Like my, uh, reishi, cordyceps, maitake, chaga, mes, mesima, lion's mane, turkey tail, shiitake, goes on and on and on. And then there's the super berry duo, so it's got goji berries and hawthorn berry, mesquite, it's got everything in here, sprouted flax. Um, and then they call something Boku Super Neapolitan Delight. And they have a little cacao, vanilla, strawberry juice, and then uh, a series of probiotics. So they tell you they want you to start out with one rounded scoop a day and gradually work your way up to four. I don't have any problem with that. It's really yummy. I wish you were here. I'd make you one of these. You'll have to make your own, and then you'll have to write to me and tell me some good combinations. I wanted to mention uh, one other thing before we part. I have a necklace on here with the Hebrew letters Yud, He, Vav, He, and they represent the name of God. From the Bible, um, God revealed his personal name uh, to Moses, and then later on he spoke, uh, uh, he, in the Bible he talks about his name. And the Orthodox Jews don't feel that the name is too sacred to speak, and so they, they use the term Adonai whenever they see these four letters. Um, and some of them, they wouldn't even speak that unless they're praying. They use the word Hashem, which means the name. Uh, but Gabriel Cousins taught me an exercise with the Yahweh, yud Hey vav Hey, uh, that I really enjoy, and I wanted to share it with you. I'm not sure if I have it exactly right, but it's the way I do it. Um, the first, I, I focus on Yud, the first letter, and I breathe up, up my spine and out my heart. And when I breathe out my heart, I think of hay. And then the third letter, I breathe up to the top of my head. That would be like the Vav. And then I bring the breath down to the heart and out through the heart. It's like hay. So it's to the heart and out is yud and hay, and then up to the top of the head, and then down and out the heart is like the vav and the hay. And on days like today where it's a little bit stressful, uh, that's a good exercise to remember to do, and especially when I'm falling asleep. Good, hey, love, hey. And what that makes me feel is calmer and more loving, like the, the name of God, the essence of God, is one within my breath and in, within my body and with my energy. This is one of the really important things when you're healing from any major illness is to use that illness as a way to awaken all the cells of your body to a higher spiritual level. 
And a good way to do that is to see yourself as an extension of the divine and to really feel it even in the parts that are uh, calling for help and for healing into all the cells of your body because at the core of every cell is the essence of the divine being. It's the creative juice which makes things alive. So, Yud, Hey, Bav, Hey. Until tomorrow.